Today's video is about how to install a vacuum pump delete on this 2007 Volkswagen Jetta that has a 2.5 liter 5 cylinder engine. This kit that I'm going to install is made by Spoolen and it has everything that is needed the block off plate, the hose that is going to be needed to route the vacuum to the brake booster, all the clamps, the bolts. and the adapter for the two hoses so everything's already here so what that means is the homework's already been done and this is going to be a very smooth process now if you're subscribed to our channel you already know that because of the vacuum pump started leaking oil it ran down into the starter and it ruined the starter so when I started checking the prices for the vacuum pumps for this 2.5 liter engines, I came across this uh, delete kit and it was like awesome. What a great opportunity to not only just replace the part but actually improve something. And by doing this, I'm getting rid of this leak forever. Not to mention that it'll free up, you know, a couple horsepower. You know, it's probably not even going to be noticeable, but nonetheless less drag on the engine. Now before you're wondering, okay, so why are we deleting this vacuum pump? Isn't it needed? Why does this car have a vacuum pump and what does this vacuum pump do? The majority of makes and models provide the vacuum needed to the brake booster through its own engine vacuum. Some other vehicles that are made by Volkswagen do it that way. Nonetheless, this 2.5 liter engine has its own vacuum pump. So a vacuum pump obviously will provide vacuum at any RPMs or any engine loads. Difference than the engine that when you floor it, you lose all your vacuum. But if you think about it, you're not going to be flooring it and pushing the brakes at the same time. It would be very unrealistic. So ideally, you're going to have the vacuum when you need it the most, which is when you decelerate and you're pushing the brakes. So like I said earlier, I'm actually glad that I'm going to be doing this video because it's an improvement. And for any of you guys that ever wonder how can you delete this annoying leaking vacuum pump, this is it. I'm going to aim the camera up close so you can see what the components are. And on the video description, I'm going to give you the part number. So if you're interested, you can always buy it online. So I'm going to aim it up close and you're going to see all the components that are ready right here. So here they are, you got the bolts, the adapter, the block off plate, the clamps, the hose is going to be going to the engine, and then you got the hose that's going to be going to the brake booster. So everything is right here. Okay, so now that you've seen the parts up close, it's time to get started. First thing, obviously, for safety, disconnect the negative battery cable. And in order to install this and to remove the vacuum pump, it's necessary to remove the upper cover. So our pretty tech Joe is going to show you how to remove this cover and after she removes it I'm going to continue showing you how to remove the vacuum pump. So I'm going to go ahead and step aside and I'm going to let her show you how to remove this cover. The engine cover is made of plastic so while removing it be careful not to break it. The engine cover is held by four rubber grommets. One here, here, and then two on the other side. Go ahead and remove the engine cover by hand by just lifting it off, but as you can tell, this one is pretty tight on there, so we're gonna have to use a pry bar to remove it. All right, we have the back loose. Now I'm just gonna move to the front. To lift the back side here of the engine cover, I'm going to remove the battery cover to make it easier. We're going to be prying right here on the engine cover, so for safety we're going to place this over the battery. Now we're going to move over to the front. For 
your safety, if you don't have one of these covers, it'd be smart to disconnect the battery cables. Now we're going to remove the two air intake screws. To disconnect the sensor, put your screwdriver in here, turn it a little bit, pry it, and then pull it out. Next step is to disconnect the air intake hose from the engine cover. Once the hose is disconnected, make sure and slide the clamp all the way over. That way the clamp does not destroy the air intake hose. Next, disconnect the MAF sensor just as you did the air intake sensor. Once everything is disconnected, go ahead and remove the engine cover. So once the cover has been removed, next step is to remove the battery. First thing is to remove this cover. Just push those two in, slides out, set it aside. Disconnect the positive battery cable. And remember it's a 10 millimeter. Right here, you're gonna remove this bolt and going to remove this bracket so you can slide the battery out. The size of the bolt for the uh, bracket is 13 millimeter. Okay, so there it is. Once the bracket is removed, just remove the battery. And once the battery is removed, next step is to remove the battery tray. The battery tray is held by this bolt right here, this one over here. That one over here. They're 10 millimeter, so they need to be removed to be able to remove that battery holder. out of the way and so I was able to slide it out show you this one right here so I can slide the battery tray out just like that okay so there it is out of the way now Next step is to remove this air intake hose. This style of clamp, when you press on the uh, when you press on the part that is sticking out, it releases it, and then you can just pull them out like that. So you have this one, you have this other one. Use this pry bar to make it easier. After I release it with the pliers, it slides out just like this one. They're both detached, this one and this one. And it's just a matter of releasing the tension from this clamp to release this part of the intake hose. Okay, it's 
let's try it out. And this right here is the hose that is going to be removed because this is the one that's going to replace it to provide the vacuum for the booster. It's going to tee into here. And they slide it right out. This one just has a clip here to just need to open up. Just gently open it. It's that one. Uh, this one's a little bit tight to get in there, so pliers are definitely going to be a must to be able to release it. To gain better access, it's better if you move the throttle body aside there's no need to disconnect most of the uh, hoses this one is needed so just disconnect okay, so that one for sure everything else you can leave connected but you do need to remove the retaining bolts to be able to move it aside T30, they're Torx as you can see And obviously, even though it didn't come in the kit, it's a good idea to install a brand new gasket on your throttle body, because that way it doesn't create a vacuum leak. So the last thing you need is to uh, improve something and then throw in something in the process. Okay, so put all those bolts removed, slide the throttle body out slightly so it releases from the pins and then you can move it to the side as you can tell the gasket started to come off so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it completely because I'm going to be installing a new one and this is what the gasket looks like so like I said inspect it look at its condition but if possible just buy a new one so what I'm going to use for this one is this long needle nose and I'm just going to lock him at the right distance that it doesn't ruin the clamp but it releases it enough just gently going to pry with this pry bar without breaking anything okay, just like that and I can release it there it is so this is the hose that needs to be removed right there the next step is to detach the check valve from the uh, brake booster just very gently pry it out with a pry bar and it'll come right off now here's something important to consider this car has a manual transmission so it won't be as hard to remove the vacuum pump as it is for the automatics. The automatics you got the shifter right here and it's necessary to remove the cover first prior to removing the retaining bolts for the pump because what that's going to do is when you remove the cover it's going to enable you to tilt it and clear the shifter linkage that is right here in front of it. This one is not like that because it's manual transmission but if yours is automatic remember take the cover off first and then once you start trying to take the thing out you're gonna know what I mean because by having the cover off it'll slide into the shifter as you tilt it and you can pull it out because of the tight space I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolts without having the camera so close since you get the idea and I'll try to film it once I'm getting it out so you can see what it looks like just to give you an idea on what I ended up using to get to this bolt on the bottom down there I have this driver right there and then I put my ratchet on I put my ratchet right here so I can loosen it and then once it's loose then I can just keep loosening it by hand like that and I'm gonna use the same one for the upper because it gives me that much more 
room to work with and lever. And up here, there's this bolt that needs to be removed because it's attached to the bracket that goes around the vacuum pump. So remove that prior to removing the vacuum pump. So with the bolt removed, slide the bracket out of the way, the one that holds this cable, and just pull the vacuum pump out. Now remember, this has the uh, manual transmission, which is a lot easier than the automatics. There's the gasket. There's the pump. There's the dumb oil leak right there. Okay, so we're getting rid of this noisy thing once and for all. I still need to transfer the uh, check valve to the host that comes with the kit. But for right now, I'm just going to set this aside over here with the rest of the stuff. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the surface really well uh, before installing the block of clay. So that's the next step, use the towel to clean the surface really good. So here's the kit up close again, and there are a couple things that I'm going to do slightly different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a light coat of this uh, high torque gray RTB to both sides of the gasket before I put this on. That way I can eliminate any possibility of a future leak just out of complete assurance. And I'm not going to put a whole lot, just with my finger I'm just going to put a very light coat and that should be enough. This is a high torque silicone so it will take the torque of the bolts. Now another thing too, the bolts that came with the kit, they are kind of short, you can see, and plus if you remember there's a bracket that went over the vacuum pump, so this will make them even shorter. Now I couldn't put the original bolts without modifying them because they're too long and they bought them out before they actually fasten this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them slightly with a cutoff wheel and I'm going to thread them in first to make sure that uh, they almost go all the way in and that enables me to tighten this all the way. I'm not saying that you cannot use the ones that came with the kit, you probably can. Uh, but it's very possible that if you are not careful when you're tightening these down because there's only going to be a few threads that are actually going to go into the uh, cylinder head you may strip the threads and create a bigger problem so your call you can use this if you're careful you can go to your hardware store and buy some that are slightly longer or you can do what I'm going to do which is I'm just going to cut these off and I'm going to use the original ones. So here are my bolts once they've been cut. You can see the length compared to the ones that came with the kit. And what I did, I made two longer and one slightly shorter because one doesn't go through the bracket. So, like I said, you can do it either way. As you can tell, the surface is clean, and now it's time to install the block off plate. Position the plate against the head, that way you know which side goes in and which side goes out. This is the side that is going to go towards the head. So this is how the gasket is going to go on. So I'm going to put a light coat of this high torque sealant. very little we're just going to make contact it's very likely that it's not needed but it's just going to be an extra insurance on my part
set it on it. And do the same thing. Apply a light coat where it's going to go against the head. So it's time to install on the engine. The two longer ones go where the bracket goes and the shorter one is for the side that doesn't have a bracket. If you end up cutting them like I did, use your thread chaser to make sure that they'll go in easy and you don't ruin the threads. Obviously you have a lot more room now with the uh, noisy vacuum pump gone. So I'm going to use the uh, ratchet with this driver to tighten them up. I'm going to tighten them about the same torque that they were when uh, I took them off. Now if you want to be very specific, you can always look up the uh, torque specs. That way you don't tighten them too much or you don't leave them loose. Okay, so that's about right. Now I just gotta put the bolt that goes over here. Use the box end to tighten it so I don't strip the head. There, that's tight. So a lot cleaner. Okay, so the next step is to install the hose. One of the things I noticed when doing a test fit that it was getting too close to this part. So I ended up trimming a section because I have a feeling that if it's all the way against it like it was, it's gonna be very hard to put the cover back on. It's not gonna wanna fit. So I trimmed this so far. I'm gonna see how it goes on. And that may be enough, but I may have to trim some more. Okay, do a test fit on it before I uh, finalize anything. So I'm gonna try to put this cover on without pushing it all the way to see how it fits. And I don't wanna do this twice. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's gonna go on before I finalize anything. This fitting is important when installing aftermarket parts because you just never know what kind of problems you're going to run into and you don't want to find out after the fact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife to just cut the hose slightly so I can remove the check valve because this check valve is going to be installed right here at the end. So like I said, I'm just going to use my knife to do that so I can free it up. So I have the check valve on. I'm installing the clamp. Same thing, I'm thinking about if I ever had to remove it, it's going to be facing up. Okay, so it's on, it's secure. Now it's time to install the adapter right there. Put the clamps in there. The size is a seven millimeter, just so you know. Two different ends. The smaller one goes towards this hose, and then the bigger one goes towards this right here. This is a very well-made kit. It comes with high-quality clamps too. You know, it's not. There's nothing cheap about it. So I don't expect to have any problems with it. Instead of installing another vacuum pump that eventually is going to leak again, this is an improvement. I'm just going to trim this one since it's slightly long.
when installing the clamp, make sure that it's not going to be interfering with the throttle body. So kind of test fit it too before you tighten it. I'm going to go ahead and install a brand new gasket so it seals properly and continue installing the remaining items in the reverse order that I took them off. And if you need the part number for the gasket, this one's made by Philpro, and there it is. So obviously there's no need to film all of that since it's just the reversal removal. I'm going to go ahead and install everything on, and once I have everything connected, I'm going to go ahead and start the engine to make sure that it has power brakes, obviously, because that's what the vacuum pump was for, and that's what the kit's going to do, it's going to provide vacuum to the brake booster. And this is how it looks when it's all done. From here, you can't even tell that it has an entire different vacuum source for the brake booster. Only for somebody that knows what to look for would figure it out. Because here's the hose right there, tucked in inside there. And aside from that, that's about it. Everything else is OEM looking. Looks very clean. So it has a very cool OEM appearance and we got rid of this bulky leaking vacuum pump. Now let's see if it works the way it's supposed to work. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to depress the pedal several times so all the vacuum is used. And now, as you can tell, the pedal is pretty much all the way up, and it's hard to press. So I'm going to start the engine, and the pedal should go down when I start it. Obviously, I have to have the clutch all the way in to start it. There. And the pedal went down. And now it has power brakes. So, I know for a fact that this car will be able to stop just the way it always did. Because there is vacuum being applied to the brake booster. Can I turn the engine off? And this was a successful upgrade. So, there you go. That's how simple it is to get rid of this annoying leaking vacuum pump in your 2.5 liter Volkswagen engine. Thanks for watching today's video. See you next time.